Hey, this is Trout Fit and Tips. Thanks for joining me. So we've been doing this tip series for a little while now, and we always try to highlight something that we do a little differently out here. Now, I've long said that Trout Pitten aims for an audience that's a little beyond the 100 level, or a little past the beginner stage, let's say. But I think that everything that we've covered in this Trout Pitten tip series, everything that we've talked about in the podcast, everything that I've written for so many years on the website really is accessible to everyone, regardless of experience level. And I'd say like, if what you're looking into, if your resource seems like it's above your pay grade, or if you're a little confused. I think that's a good thing. Experienced anglers feel the same way. There's always something that we're looking to learn. The best anglers I know are the ones who are always working on the next thing. And I think being a little confused gives you, you know, that goal that's in sight. You know that you need to learn this thing and the next thing and the next thing, and then you'll finally kind of get there. And maybe that's the point of all of this anyway. I think it is. So let me show you something that's a little different. I call it a corner cast. We're gonna be false cast in this way. You're gonna have your back cast there and then you can deliver there. I call it round in the corner. Some people will call it a change of direction cast. It's a little different. And I've showed this to many people and, and a lot of people say, oh, I didn't, I didn't know the line could do that. It can't. No, it's not magic. It's just good casting form. And um, you, you get that down and it's, it's pretty simple, but it's really, really useful, this corner cast. Are you ready? Here we go. So I'm often surprised uh, how much success out here really comes down to good casting. There are two things that hold anglers back the most. It's weighting skill and good casting. To be able to do what you need to do out here, you need both those things. Luckily, that's in our control, right? And good casting comes from just a good baseline. And, it, you know, we need it to be up in the air. We need the fly line up in the air. And good crisp stops between two points. If you think about 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock, that's where it needs to be. Acceleration between these two points, good crisp stop here and here. If you think 11 and 1, you'll probably end up at 10 and 2. When I... Have anglers do this corner cast or almost any other thing. Or when I'm trying something new myself, the first thing I do is make sure that I can false cast and keep that line parallel to the water. That's really the best value, I think, of false casting. We don't need to do a lot of false casts when we're fishing, right? But if you can be here and keep that line up there parallel with the water, then you have the timing, you have the crisp stops. And then you can do this corner cast, which looks like this. I'm back casting here, but I'm delivering to you, right? But we need that good baseline. Let's look at it. So here it is. Again, the line's up there. It's parallel to the water. I'm false casting so I can get that timing, so I can feel the rod load, so I can feel how it flexes, so I can know how fast I need to be in between those two points, so I can cast there and and back cast there and deliver to you. That's the corner cast. Again, here's what it looks like. My false cast is over the water, and then I round the corner and I'm casting. 90 degrees, coming around the corner, 90 degrees. Back cast and round in the corner. So this is the kind of situation where I would use the corner cast the most. Right here, I mean, so I wanna deliver out there. I don't have back cast room because my, well, my back's kind of up against the wall, so to speak. Of course, it's got brush and trees and stuff behind me. Now, um, traditionally, your fly fishing cast, you know, you have your back cast here and then 180 degrees is where your forward cast goes. And if I want to cast to you, normally you'd be throwing a back cast there. We can't do that, right? So this is where I'm going to use that corner cast. Here we go. Uh, the false cast, again, is over the water. Get a little longer even. False cast over the water, back cast, and then I'm, I'm right there. I'm rounding that corner, back cast, rounding the corner. Do it a couple more times. False cast over the water and right there to you, All right? Rounding that corner. So another option here is to roll cast. I'd say that's, what I, that's how I see people, you know, solve the problem more often. I mean, roll cast is a great option. It's great, it works. Right here, right here, right here, and then roll it. I don't have back cast room so I can roll cast. And then, though, I need to recover a lot of that line, kind of get everything lined up, get that belly on the water, and then roll cast. I'm just going to say the roll cast 
is a little more challenging in that way. You need your situation to line up for you. And here, get that line on the water and I can roll cast. We can do it. It takes a little longer to set it up, so it slows you down a bit. Here, if I just roll through one, <laughs> if I just go through, you know, one corner cast after another, all it takes is a false cast and I'm right back in. If I'm choosing to roll cast here, I kind of have to get everything lined up and then I go. I'll also say there are lots of times where the cover is so much that I have limbs up here. And now I'd have to roll cast and keep my rod down, which can be a bit more difficult. But again, you can do it either way. I just, I certainly prefer most times to do the corner cast because it keeps me fishing more. It keeps my line in the water more often. Hey, I'm proud to tell you this video is sponsored by our friends over at Squala Fishing. Squala came on the scene a couple of years ago and they quickly gained a reputation as builders of some of the finest fly fishing gear on the market. They make waders, jackets, shirts, and pants so well designed, you hardly notice them. Squala gear is built for diehard anglers. It's gear designed by fishermen and built for fishing. These carbon waders, for example, are made for exactly what we do out here every day. They keep you dry, keep you comfortable, keep you fishing. I've really fallen in love with all of the Squala stuff. From the thermo line of marine wool tops and bottoms to the sun shirts like the Soul Tactical hoodie, to their jackets, insulation, and waders, Squala hits the mark over and over. So for you trout bitten regulars, Squala is offering a discount code of 10%. Use the code TROUTBITTEN10 on your order at squalafishing.com. Thanks very much to Squala and thanks to everybody out there for supporting the Trout Bitten Project. So I grew up fishing small streams, uh, really no wider than a country road. And in Pennsylvania, that always comes with mountain laurel and bushes, overhanging tree limbs, and it was hard. When I switched to fly fishing in my teens, it became even harder, but I figured it out, you know? And I think the law, if you fish long enough, you end up figuring stuff like this corner cast, you figure it out for yourself. But for me, I think that's where this corner cast started. I just kind of realized that the cast there, the deliver there, because I kind of needed to, being in that tunnel of cover all the time. And now I use it out on more open streams all the time. So a couple more tips here on this corner cast. Remember, it always comes down to the, you have to start out with that, with those good fundamentals. Crisp speed in between two points so that the line will then do what the rod tip does. Here's a key point to always understand about all fly casting. Whatever the rod tip does, the, the fly line will follow. Then of course the leader follows and then the fly follows. If you have enough speed to make all that happen, make the rod flex, get the power in the system, and you can back cast there, get the rod tip to go there and the fly line will deliver the fly there. Um, what I'm talking about rounding this corner, that rod tip is not going way out and around and then open because then when my back's up against the wall back there, I would, well, I'd be hitting the treats, right? So it's just a small motion. It's here and then the rod tip just kind of goes out and around. I think you can see that in some of the video. It's just going out and around. There's an oval up there, but it's not real wide. So last point here, I showed this on a fly line. This is best done with a fly line, a dry fly, sometimes an indicator with a, a lighter setup. Now most of you know that I like, almost all my underwater presentations, I like a mono rig, a tight line system, right? Longer leader. This cast isn't great for that. However, the standard mono rig, the little thicker leader build that I use and talk about a lot, it'll deliver it. it you can't go 90 degrees like that with a standard build. But you can, you can definitely get a 45 degree. The, the leader has enough push and power to round that corner a little bit, to round off a corner. Uh, with a micro mono rig, it has to kind of be delivered 180 degrees from wherever the back cast was to where that forward cast is gonna go. You can't round the corner with a real thin leader. All right, there you go. See if you can round the corner. Keep the rod tip up, keep the speed in the cast. It'll work for you. So try it out. Fish hard, friends. Have fun out there. I think I just put a hole in my waders. <laughs> so I'm often surprised how often, you can't say often twice.